Good morning, youth, and welcome to another Youth Ministry Minute message. Brother Kraft is always thanking you for this opportunity. Thank you for chiming in, right? Thanking you for um, being here at this platform that we have to share God's own divine word. It's been quite a long time that we've been operating like this, uh, more than a year, uh, and, and and I know it's kind of been, a, well, it's been different. It's been different for me. I'm so used to uh, you know, we'd be in the in the youth sanctuary and we'd be having a good time and doing all kind of activities and things like that. This has been quite different, but I believe that it's been rewarding, right? It's still giving us time and opportunity and and just a chance to 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 share God's holy divine word uh, in a short time span and just in a time span that you guys can can listen to, right? So I appreciate you so much. Continue, continue, continue as long as we uh, have this opportunity uh, to chime in and learn more about. Uh, God's word as we as we learn about it together. So I'm trying to get us to see just why God's love is just so out of this world, right? And different from the definition of love that we have or that we operate in. Our love or the way in which we love longstanding is drastically different than God's uncompromising, unconditional agape type love, right? Although, although I will say that we do try to operate in this agape type form of love sometimes, I just believe that for humans, it's just really not sustainable, right? It's not long term for us. But I believe we're going to get down to the nitty gritty today, a little bit deeper uh, inside of why God's love is out of this world and really what really makes his love different for ours, right? But let's get started, though. I want to want to get started. Let's get started with the memory verse coming from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 9. And it says, Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love God does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. So we learned last week and we started jumping off that 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 that, that God is the epitome of of love. God is love. That's what verse eight said. God is love, right? The definition of love and 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 what the verse said about it last week. Remember what it, what it says in the, in the definition that that love is goodwill. Love is benevolent. Love is the affection towards a person, right? So think about it. God is and has all of those things towards us. God has goodwill towards us. God is so <laughs> benevolent towards us, right? And then God is affectionate towards us as well, right? So we are his children. We are God's children, right? And 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 we are the object of his love. And that's that's amazing, right? But I want to get back to the diamonds, right, that Paul was uncovering when he was describing and talking about the characteristics of love and how love, this type of love, agape love, functions. Remember, we talked about last week, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we started that. We looked at chapter 12, right, and how it ran into chapter 13. Remember, the Bible was not set up in chapters and verses like we have it today. Today is just used so we can uh, chronologically be able to find it and things like that. But it wasn't set up like that. This was a huge letter. And Paul kind of ended that chapter 12 by telling them that the most fascinating, most thing that we should long for is love, right? And then he goes into 13 and starts describing love, right? And we started at verse 4. And it says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 6. We still have verse, uh, we're going to start at verse 5 today, but let's start at verse 4 for the reading. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. All right. So remember last week we looked at just how patient and kind and non-jealous and non-proud and, and non-boastful love is supposed to be. All right. That's how love is supposed to be. We kind of looked at some examples, right, that, that kind of differentiates how uh, God's love is different from our love. All right. But now let's continue on because this is really what we're going to see. And we're going to see just how God's love and our love differs a little bit more and how much further, get this, we got to take our love. All right. We got to raise our love. We got to raise the standards of our love. All right. So I'm going to start off at verse five. We talked about root last week, but I want to jump into it because it says that love is does not demand its own. Wow. And I want to pause there. Boop, press the pause button. Because uh, what I hear in the opposite of that is that in many cases, sometimes, get this, 
we are prone to love in selfish reasons, right? Or according to selfish reasons, or we, we, I'm going to love you because it benefits me. Get that. I will love you, but I'll only love you when I get my way. Uh-oh. Or I'm highlighted or when I'm leading the charge, right? In other words, Paul is saying that, that love knows how to surrender and it knows how to yield to what God says, one. But then also it knows how to yield and, and surrender to the benefit of the relationship that you're in. Wow. Love knows how to surrender. Real love. I'm reading this article. And I, I read this article and, and this part kind of fascinated with me. So I'm going to share it. It says real love looks for ways to communicate, connect, and even make appropriate compromises. The God kind of love looks for common ground, strives for harmony, and values unity. A person practicing true love is willing to give up the right to always be right. Wow. Now, I'm going to just be honest. I'm going to let me pause for a second. Like I said, I know I need to work on this. Even in my relationship with my wife, sometimes I can just want my own way and I can, I'm going to just be honest. All right. I'm going to just be honest. I know she probably watched it, but I'm going to be honest. Right. But I'm always got to come back to the Bible because the Bible says this, you know, the golden rule in Matthew chapter 12, where it says in everything, then do to others as you have them do to you. For this is the essence of the law and the prophets. Right. So and and and, and get this, though, because this is not necessarily talking about um, uh, 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 I would say a parent to a child relationship, because a parent is 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 given to you to be over you, to try to show you the way and how to operate. So sometimes they will have to love you in a manner, in a manner that makes you do things and, and act a certain way. Right. So I don't think Paul was talking about love in this man. He's talking about love, loving each other and loving in uh, our relationships and loving in, in general. Right. So let's not take that kids the wrong way. Right. But then it goes on to say that love is not irritable and keeps no record of wrongdoing. And it's supremely wise how the Holy Spirit get this, how the Holy Spirit through Paul arranges these characteristics, uh, because this one comes right after loving uh, after my own way. And then right after that, it says love is not irritable or love does not take a record of wrongdoing. That, that's just fascinating. What's the first thing that happens when I don't get my way? I'm asking you, what's, what happens when you don't get your way? Well, just like Paul wrote, we get irritable and then we start taking a record. Uh, then I start logging it. Uh, mom did this to me on March 25th. Uh, my sister uh, was mean to me this day, and therefore I'm not going to uh, say good morning to her. I'm not going to get her no juice. We act like that. We begin to take mental notes of the wrong that we feel is done to us, right? But get this, all because we were being selfish in the first place. I hope you're hearing this. I hope this is good to you. I hope this is just not for me because I'm going to be honest. I, 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 I'm, I'm preaching myself on this one because I, I enjoy learning, right? If this particular passage of scripture was a boxer, I'd probably be knocked out right now. <laughs> I'm not probably, I'm not the only one. I, I hope not. But if I am, that's okay. Because the only way we grow in, and, 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 and grow inside of God, sometimes we got to get beat up and get bruised, right? So uh, I'll be a box. I'm, I'm learning from this past scripture that I got to love, not demand in my own way. I can't be irritable and I can't keep a record of wrongdoing. And, I, and this is the separation of God's love. This is why God's love is out of this world. All right. Uh, I can't get upset or mad or irritable when I wasn't going about the goodwill, the benevolence or, or, or the affection giving in the right way from the get go. I can't get upset. How many times have we played the victim role? Right. When in all actuality, we, you and me, be honest now. I want you to be honest this morning. You and me were not loving correctly or with the right spirit in the first place. You really didn't have the right intention, but since that person reacted that way, oh, you're going to feel like you're the victim. Come on now. That's what Paul is saying. We can't love like that. How many arguments have you gotten into with friends or family when you felt that you were wrong? But if you really just think back, you 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 you, you, you put out love. You, you gave love from a selfish place. And get this. I don't even know that that could be considered love. When we give it out from a selfish standpoint, that's what Paul is saying. Oh, man, this is awesome. The word of God is plain in writing right here when it's telling us and it's breaking down the mental and the emotional state of man. When we do not follow the word of God or on a more personal level, we when we love with selfish ambitions. This is what happens. 
get irritable. These things start happening. He's breaking it all down. It's a psychology from the, the first century. Paul is writing it. And I don't even think we can all love that we can all love like that. Like that's 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 mind boggling. Right. I may be preaching myself. Like I said, this is this is, is this is deep to me. And I, I, I'm i glad that the spirit led me down this road to start really kind of looking at love because I really think we can all learn from it. Right. Learning that God loves a lot different. And, and, and the way that we use the word love is really not appropriate or really not conducive or correlating to the way that God has set it up. Right. God loves out of this world. His love is out of this world. So I want you to think about it this week. I want you to think about the love that you are showing. I want you to examine it. I heard a, a wise person say that um, the, 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 the the difference between womanhood and boyhood, I mean, womanhood and, and, and girlhood or boyhood and manhood is that you're able to check yourself. Simply put, when you can check yourself and hold yourself to a standard that you know is right, and the Bible says it too, when you can uh, 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 not just hear the word of God, but do the word of God, that's what makes you different. So now that we're learning about love, let's do better. Now, again, I'm talking to myself. I'm praying that I can do better with this as well um, and, and, and that we can do better. So I, like I said before, we should strive to be more like God in this love department. We experience it in spurts, but God lives and loves in this type of love all the time. I want to encourage you. No, I want to challenge us, like I said last week, to love a little bit deeper and love a little bit better. First, we're learning about God's love. Now we got to challenge ourselves to love the way that God loves. All right. So I hope you got something out of this message. Uh, we talked about how love is not demanding of its own, how it's not irritable, and how it doesn't take a record of wrongdoing. All right. And many of that can be uh, uh, examined if we just examine the type of love that we're putting out. Wow. All right. Group me, group me, group me. Finish. Hope you say it. Hope you got something out of that. Group me. Let me see if you will be honest. In verse four, it says that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It's not a man his own. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. Is there any characteristic of love in these first five verses that you have trouble with and why? I told you mine. So share with me. In those first when we looked at four last week and five this week, any one of those characteristics that you, as a young person, have a problem with, share it in a group meeting. All right. I love you so much. I thank you for chiming in and listening once again. Like I said before, prayerfully, hopefully we will be back soon. Um, but until then, let's continue uh, logging in here and, and learning God's holy divine word together. All right. I love you. I love you. I, I have goodwill for you. I'm benevolent towards you. I, I, I just want the best for you. All right. So I love you and I hope you love Brother Craft too. I love you. Brother Craft out. This is God.